Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome to the Impact Lounge YouTube channel. Please hit subscribe if it's your first time here. We're talking Impact Wrestling, no Ring of Honor, no NXT, none of that. Just straight up Impact. So if you're an Impact fan, please hit that subscribe button. Doing something a little different today. I actually got Ro with me, so he usually hops on for the Impact reviews. But we're going to talk the two latest releases, and it's uh, Marche Rocket and... MJ Jenkins and I'm sure there are more to come in the coming days I have some ideas for who they might be but um, first row man let's talk let's talk Marche Rocket uh, for a lot of people you might say oh well he wasn't highly featured on the show you know uh, you know no big loss if, uh, that's how some people might look at it but look this this is a guy and I've, and I've talked to him before and he's you know still gonna come on the podcast uh, this is a likable dude very likable. Um, I think he was really miscast in this whole heel thing. I think the the Team X Gold was the worst possible way to start him. Um, you know, I think at that time they could have brought him on as uh, Billy Corgan's um, answer to the X Division champion. You know, and he got to come in kind of a, more of a monster. But um, I just, you know, that's me personally. I think he was really, really miscast, and I don't think he was um, able to really show what he could do i mean uh his very not his very first match his second match he had an x division championship match against djz which he lost that was the second match and uh the last time we saw him on tv was the grand championship against moose grand championship match it lasted a round and a half moose won the first round and then he beat marche clean uh, a minute into the second round and i don't think the guy ever got the opportunity that he needed um I don't really know your thought your thoughts on Marche. You know, I mean, I've made it uh, very very clear he was always one of my one of my guys. But um, what do you think about this this uh, release? I mean, obviously, there's just not always a spot for everybody. This is a guy I don't think really got his you know his opportunity. Yeah. Um. When he first when I seen that he was a sign on board with Impact, I uh you know went and looked at some of his matches in other promotions, so I was excited. It was like, okay, this guy is a big guy, but you know he looks like he can move fast, he can fly, like that's cool. Um, I just feel, and I think we can say this for a lot of these departures and departures that are coming, coming. Um, you know, with all the regime changes, I think had Corgan still been under control, I think uh Marche would have been used in a better capacity. But I agree with you. Um, he was miscasted. I never bought him as an X Division uh, competitor. I know, you know, nowadays they try to do, you know, go back to the whole there is no limits. But I mean, at least to me, the X Division is and will always be their cru their cruiserweight division, and that's fine. And, you know, I I like that. But um, it, it's just unfortunate because one thing that Impact's lacking is a mid card. And you could have easily slid, you know, Marche Rocket into the mid card, you know, give him something to do. But, you know, once again, only having impact in two hours, it's hard to get, you know, everybody on the show. And, you know, it would have been nice to, to see him get to do more. And the little times that we got to see him, I kind of felt like there was some potential there. But, you know, it was just little short bits and pieces. If I were booking, if I were on the creative team, that time that he had the grand championship match with Moose, you know, it lasted a round and a half. And then Moose got attacked after the match. I, do, I, I don't remember who it was. I don't remember who he was feuding with at the time. I don't know if it was EC3. It might have been Lashley. might have been Mike Bennett for all I know. I don't I don't, I don't think it was him. But do you remember? Do you remember? Um, I, was it Galloway? I can, I don't, if I'm no, not it was Gal okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Galloway. Galloway. So Galloway jumps him. And I I, I could have sworn Galloway had no 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 it was Eli Drake because it was a two on one beat down it was Eli Drake and Chris Adonis. Okay. So I thought you know if I'm being the creative team for a minute, I would have flipped the dude as a um, a baby face right then and there, you know to help bail Moose out, and you could have actually paired him up with Moose to kind of be Moose's corner guy for a little while, and that would have given him something to do for quite some time. So. It's unfortunate. Again, this is a guy that uh, is really likable. I'm looking forward to talking talking to him on the podcast again, and and you know get into inside his mind a little bit. I think that much like Aiden O'Shea, I think you could see him with the um, with Billy Corgan's NWA promotion, just depending on how Billy Corgan gets that off the ground exactly. But 
I, I totally feel that he'll end up there. Uh, let's transition into MJ Jenkins. MJ Jenkins was famously signed by the company for taking a bus to Knockouts Knockdown. Um, you know, the wrestlers usually travel there on their own dollar for uh, for that kind of work. And uh, she she took I think like a 26 hour bus ride or something like that. The company signed her to be a part of the roster, and she really never got an opportunity. Uh, she was in a Knockouts Battle Royal. Uh, it was a knockouts gauntlet. She was on explosion a couple times. Had a really nice showing. I mean, very athletic. There's not a there's not a real a lot of like super athletic women on TV right now. I think uh, whatever her name is, uh, Naomi or whatever, is, is really one that stands out. But I think she's. I always thought she was a little reckless and. Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I wasn't really into her, but um, MJ kind of fit that role for the company, and. Definitely never got her opportunity. Yeah, um, for, as far as with her, and this is the one thing I did fear when I had, you know, heard about the, her whole backstory about her traveling 26 hours. I was worried that they were only signing her just, you know, for as to get good PR. Because, you know, for her to, you know, be driving that long, you know, for a tryout. You know, nothing's guaranteed, and then they bring her on board. You know, it looks good. But um, that was my fear. You know, how are they going to utilize her? And I think the only match I recall seeing her in, it was some kind of multi-knockouts match. I, I forgot what, what it was for. But, um, yeah, you know, we talk about, you know, them needing, you know, knockouts, new knockouts. Because, I mean, you got your top four, top five, whatever, but you need some you know, that you're, you have waiting to develop. So when, you know, the women that are at the top, whether they, you know, go on, leave the company, retire, whatever the case may be, there's not that void. And I felt like her and, you know, even Ava's story, like there's a next wave of um, women, uh, Hanaya, and uh, there's one more I'm missing. I think it's, is it Kira Hogan? Yeah, and, and to me, that's like really redundant. They're all very similar talents. Um yeah, all young, um, all young, um, young. Ta uh, well, I don't know how old they are, but you know, all talents that you could have developed. You know, in <clears throat> excuse me, the best way to get you know talents over is when you have established vets for them to work with. So instead of having everyone say you know chasing the knockouts championship, you could have a um, LVN or you know Sienna, uh, Gail Kim, all of them. You know, working with these young talent, uh, young knockouts to get them up to par where, you know, we can have different different matches and whatnot. But, yeah, it, it, I hate to see her go. Um, I think it's going to hurt if she goes somewhere else and really flourishes because that's, that's the one thing when I see some of these departures. It's one thing when somebody's been given an opportunity to go on TV and it is just this, this doesn't work out. But for somebody not to get that opportunity and you see, some you know, another company gets them and, you know, they go and, and it's like, wow, you know, Impact had had them underneath their umbrella, but it is what it is. It's it's kind of like with all these knockout photo shoots have been going on lately. They're kind of letting us know who the knockouts are in the company. So I feel like Alicia Edwards is next to go, which I was watching uh, one of her explosion matches today against Laurel Van Ness, and I really like her. I mean, she could fire the crowd up. She had a lot of energy. She was a daredevil. She's another one I don't think really got an opportunity, but she, you know, she kind of went into that big angle with Davey and and uh, Angelina Love, and then there was not really anything for her after that, and there was just nowhere nowhere to go. And you know, I feel like they could have at least used her in a in a uh, enhancement role, if anything, kind of like they do with Ava Story. So this is kind of my thing with the Knockouts division. They they don't break new Knockouts in. They you, if you come to the knockouts division, you have to be an established name and they can do something with you. But if you come in and you're just this brand new name, they have no clue what to do with those knockouts. They don't know what kind of angles to put them in. They don't. And with the, you know, towards the end with Dixie, that whole era with her and Billy, they, uh, you know, whether it's uh, Ali or, uh, damn, who was the one with the bromance? Uh, Raquel, right? Raquel, you know, she wasn't wrestling much, but but they found roles for these girls. And, you know, right, Rosemary wasn't wrestling at one point. 
but she had an on-screen role. And all the knockouts had some kind of on-screen role, even if they were not wrestling. And they have not been able to capture that with this group. But that's some, that's something I really feel with the booking and the knockouts. Like unless you have a name, they're just they're clueless of how to get this person into an engaged feud and get him TV time. I mean, you can't sit here and think whether it's MJ or Alicia, even Ava's story for that matter, who is, who has been the one obviously who slipped through the cracks that they keep rolling with. But, um, you can't look at them and, and th even creatively in your head, think of what kind of feud you could have put them in. I mean, what the hell are you going to do with them? So, yeah, there was so, there's so many different things in it. And I think that's, that's the one thing that I, I've always loved about impact and I seen it more when when Corgan was on board. It felt like even if it was talent that wasn't we weren't seen every week, mixing it up in the ring, like Aiden O'Shea, you know, there was a big old thing, you know, for you know people who were clamoring to see him wrestle. You know, he was being used as um, Billy's right hand man, not wrestling, but you know, we're seeing him on TV. You know, it, there's there's ways to utilize you know these people. But I, I would say this, and like you were saying, it seems like. With especially with the knockouts, they want established names. I feel like when they're bringing people in, those people are getting pushed to the front. So even the people that you have, like LVN, I mean, I think at by this time LVN should be one of the top, you know, contenders for the knockout championship. But you know, she's been pushed to the back with, you know, you got Taya coming in, and then we don't know who's coming next. So. And then any any of these newer talents that they did sign, I mean, when are they going to get the opportunity to break through? Because you're every time you bring someone new in, you you know you feel compelled to thrust them to the front of the line. So, yeah, yeah, that's a that's a problem they got with the knockouts and with Kira and Hanaya coming. I mean, what the hell are they going to do with them? Are they going to have a similar, um, you know, never see them on TV and then be shown the pink slip eventually? You know, so. Uh, I really hope Alicia doesn't go, but I feel like the writing is on the wall for her. I know Braxton Sutter wasn't isn't being brought to the tapings. The writing may, may be on the wall for him, which I'll, I will be real pissed at that point. It, it's almost like they're uh, purposely trying to get rid of the wrestlers I like. And um, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to cut Caleb Conley on me next? I mean, God. But, you know, hopefully there's not too many more releases I, I found out rockstar spud uh after doing a little bit of digging the reason he really requested his release was because i do remember this when the new regime took over um it was right before that bob Ryder, who handles the handles their travel didn't do the proper uh paperwork and they weren't able to get spud's visa approved to work in the united states and he actually lost out on a lot of um bookings because he was not able to get to the U S and it's been a big mess. So I guess he felt that he just needed to cut ties. Cause he wasn't receiving a paycheck from impact cause he hasn't been booked at all. So. Yeah. But know. for, for me, for rockstar spud, um, I kind of feel, uh, and I don't want to make it seem like he was some bum or anything. Cause I thought he was good, but he had his chances, his opportunities. So it wasn't like he was a guy that was um, misutilized. I mean, towards the end, yeah. But, I mean, you know, two-time exhibition champion. Uh, you know, he had a world title shot. I mean, he was given a really good run. So, you know, to see him go, I mean, it sucks. But at least, you know, we saw the best of him. I think just for me, when I'm seeing some of these departures, this is people we never get to see. You know, we get a small sample size. Right, so there, there's the people who have given us years, and then there's the people who just not didn't get the opportunity to show what they could do. And you at least want to see people get that opportunity. So uh, hopefully we'll be talking to Marche soon, and uh, I'm sure he's going to be in contact with Billy Corgan, and hopefully good things happen happen there. Um, who knows what's up with MJ? I mean, she hasn't promoted Impact on her Twitter in a very long time, and that's usually a very telling sign about someone's future with the company. So. Um, thanks for swinging by folks hit that subscribe button here on the channel talking impact wrestling like we do and uh, if there's any more news any more releases any more signings wherever whatever you know where to go impact lounge talk to you later peace